so as you see um, the brightness in Sifid's method this is uh, the variability of brightness as you see the brightness increases with time and it's it, it changes so using this way you can get the absolute magnitude and it, by observation you can get the apparent magnitude and this way you can get the distance of the galaxy at very uh, large distances only the general characteristics of galaxies can be used to estimate their luminosities therefore distances uh, using Hubble constant and Hubble's low we can get the distance of a galaxy because distant galaxies are moving according to Hubble distant galaxies are moving away from our Milky Way with the recession speeds VR uh, radial velocity uh, proportional to the distance so as galaxies or stars or objects move away uh, are more distant the uh, velocities are higher and higher uh, so if we get the velocity of that galaxy using the Doppler effect the redshift we can know the distance so the velocity uh, uh, we can sorry get the velocity so knowing the velocity we can get the distance by uh, substituting in and Hubble's constant by 70 kilometers per second and Hubble's constant um, is approximate pe some people uh, substitute in it from 50 to 100 so it's a range from 50 to 100 many galaxies are typically millions or billions of parsecs from our galaxies so that's why typical distance units is megaparsecs which is one million parsec and gigaparsec which is one billion parsec and distances of uh, megaparsec or even gigaparsec the lights we see left the galaxies millions or billions of years ago so what you see of galaxies in the sky is you're looking at the past you're not looking at the current time it's not a photo taken for that galaxy now it's a galaxy uh, it, it's how this galaxy looked from a million uh, years ago for example according to the distance of that galaxy okay um, vastly different sizes and luminosities from small low luminosity irregular galaxies much smaller and less luminous than Milky Way to giant elliptical and large spirals a few times the Milky Way size and there are many different sizes and many different luminosities okay you can know the rotation curve of a galaxy and that can be done using um, redshifts so you can do a redshift for a part of the galaxy here uh, so uh, sorry um, uh, you can see if there is a shift or a blue shift so the red shift will be the part of the galaxy that's moving away from you and the blue shift will be the part of the galaxy coming towards you okay and this way 
you can know the rotation curve at the distance from the center of the galaxy as you see here the distance this is moving towards earth and this is moving away from earth and based on the rotation curves you can get uh, the mass of the galaxy using Kepler's third law to infer masses of galaxies because um, there is a relation it's 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 a development of uh, Kepler's law it has a relation between the um, uh, the distance to the center and and the um, period of rotation and this way you can get the mass okay this is a relation of mass uh, in elliptical galaxies compared to the mass of our Milky Way so mass of elliptical galaxies is from 0 0.0001 to 50 uh, masses of our Milky Way and spirals are 0 0.005 to 2 uh, masses and so the elliptical have the the highest masses actually not just the highest masses it, it has the biggest range for very small to very very big and um, it's the same also for diameters and will be also the same thing for lu uh, luminosity of spirals is higher than elliptical and irregular because spirals have um dust so this dust will cause it to be more luminous okay from the measurement of stellar velocities 